starts at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, April 6th. Thanks for joining us today. Our top stories this morning. A young couple is dead from an apparent murder suicide in Northeast Bear County this morning. It happened on Hickory Ridge Drive in a neighborhood off of O'Connor Road near Converse. Sarah Costa takes us to the scene where deputies found the man and woman inside the home with gunshot wounds. The sun is now up and the scene shortly cleared after the medical examiner arrived to take the man away who shot and killed himself, according to deputies. But here's what the scene looked like earlier this morning. Shortly after one o'clock this morning, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said just after one this morning, a woman from this home called 911 saying she had been shot. The call disconnected. The dispatcher was able to call back. This time a man answered, confirming to the dispatcher that he did shoot the woman and he intended to shoot her again and then also intended to shoot himself. The dispatcher was tried to convince him not to shoot himself or the woman again. He hung up when Converse police and deputies arrived. They heard two gunshots. Deputies and officers forced themselves into the home. That's where they found the man dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in the bathroom and the woman also in the bathroom. She had two gunshot wounds to the lower part of her body, but at that time she was still alive. Deputies tried to save her life by applying a tourniquet to her. She was rushed to Bamsey in critical condition and into emergency surgery, but she died at the hospital from those injuries. Sheriff Javier Salazar is calling this an act of domestic violence. He is urging the community for those who may be in harmful or potentially dangerous relationships to seek out help. From Northeast Bear County, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. Body cam video from yesterday's shooting involving a Bear County deputy could possibly be released within 10 days. That's according to BCSO. The suspect in the case is dead and has been identified by family members as 18-year-old Robert Innocencio. The deputy shot is expected to recover. This is a developing story, so stay with KSET on air and online for the latest. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has told the UN Security Council that the Russian military must be brought to justice immediately for war crimes. Meanwhile, the White House is announcing additional aid to Ukraine for missiles and more sanctions against Russia. Australia and the UK are also joining forces with the US to provide more lethal aid to Ukraine. A third suspect has been arrested in connection to the mass shooting in Sacramento this past weekend. Police say the suspect was taken into custody for being a prohibited person in possession of a firearm. The other two men arrested have been identified as brothers. Right now, police think all of this started because of a fight. Ivanka Trump testified Tuesday before the House Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. Her decision to cooperate is a significant development for the committee. Lawmakers wanted to discuss what Ivanka knew about her father's efforts to pressure then Vice President Mike Pence to reject the results of the 2020 election. Her testimony lasted about eight hours. Oklahoma's legislature approved a bill yesterday that would make abortion basically illegal in the state. Now it just needs the governor's signature to become law. The measure targets health care workers who perform the procedure. Women who receive the procedure would not face penalties. The FDA warning of potentially contaminated raw oysters. The agency working with the U.S. and Canadian public health authorities regarding a norovirus outbreak that has been linked to raw oysters from British Columbia. Officials have confirmed that the oysters were distributed to restaurants and retailers in at least 13 states, including Texas. Amazon is moving forward with a plan to provide internet connectivity all over the planet. Yesterday, Amazon announced a deal with three rocket companies to launch satellites that would beam internet signals from space, including Blue Origin. General Motors and Honda are joining forces to build a $30,000 electric car, but it's no small task because doing it in a profitable way is tricky. The companies believe that by working together, they can develop new, cheaper batteries to improve vehicle performance and sustainability. People paying back student loans are set to get a few extra months of relief. The government is planning to extend the current pause on federal loan repayment through the end of August. An official announcement of the extension is expected today. And that's today's 9 at 9.
let's go ahead and go outside with live cam. It's pretty nice out there. I stepped out there to get my, you know, my second serving of coffee and it was a nice trip to the car. Well, it's, it's, it's windy. Our front is through and it feels a lot better out there. We're watching some hazy conditions on. I want to show you the time lapse. This is pretty cool. We see the front coming through. So we're going to start at 6 a.m. here. Here comes the front. We'll pause it right there. There's your front. Came through about 7 o'clock, brought the gusty winds. You can feel the cooler air working in. But here is what's pretty interesting. We'll go forward a little bit more. And by about 8 o'clock, I know it's kind of hard to see, but you see the haze in the atmosphere there. I suspect that's dust and some oak pollen. It looks like some oak pollen got picked up with this front, some of those gusty winds. So just a heads up. We'll see where the, the pollen count lands tomorrow. Oak was in the high category today, a little lower than yesterday. Uh, but that count was probably taken before the front came through. 67 degrees right now. Northerly winds at 18 miles per hour. Dew point is at 43 and falling. And the wind gusts, they really are going to be the big story today. 31, the gusts right now here in San Antonio, gusting now to 41 in Hondo. These numbers will pick up some. It's going to be a very blustery morning. So for your trash can, Hey, we're going to put it in the neighbor's yard territory. It's going to roll right down there. Be careful. Gusts to 40 miles per hour will do that. Uh, so make sure you, if it's your trash day, your trash is secured. Uh, as far as forecast goes, uh, well, there is the pollen count. I did want to show that. Oak is high, 830, molds 920, grass, mulberry, hackberry, all low. Now let's talk forecast. Here's what you can expect. 72 noontime, 75 by 1 p.m. We're up close to 80 by 4 p.m. That'll probably be our high temperature. Still some gusty winds, but those winds try to die down a little bit tonight, and that's going to lead to some Chilly temperatures by tomorrow morning. We're talking 40s. Gets even cooler by Thursday. That forecast is straight ahead, guys. Justin, thank you. We have some morning commute leftovers out there and a few fender benders to report. Traffic looks great at 37 in Hackbear, but we are seeing slowing on eastbound uh, Highway 90, northbound 35 near downtown. And we do have a fender bender showing up on one of these cameras. It's at eastbound I-10 near Callahan. We're also seeing traffic stack stacking just past I-10 on Loop 410 eastbound. In your other morning headlines, some mind-boggling numbers coming out of Ukraine and Americans actually helping the Chinese. More deadly weather in Texas and the roar of the tiger, well actually of tiger at the Masters. David Sears is here. Maybe Tiger'd like to think it's going to be a roar of a tiger, right? <laughs> I, I, you know, if, if you ever watched Tiger play, and a lot of folks have, he doesn't go into these things with just wanting to show up. He goes into these things with wanting to win. <clears throat> he's already got his mind set on winning. And this is the first golf tournament he's played since that accident. So this is absolutely amazing. You and I were chatting this morning in the newsroom. This would be a remarkable yeah, comeback story. Absolutely incredible. So we'll get to that in just a second. We'll hear from Tiger in a minute. But first, let's talk about this. Because when we talk about the war in Ukraine, of course, the death and destruction caused <laughs> by the Russian invasion is devastating, but here are a few numbers to think about. The UN reporting that 4.2 million people have been forced to flee their homes and flee the country. The total population of Ukraine before the war, 41 million. So 10% of that country's population is no longer in that country. More than 7 million people have been internally displaced. More than half of those folks have children and 57% of the 7 million include elderly family members. The signs point to all those numbers continuing to rise, including the death toll, unfortunately. The U.S. now helping out China when it comes to trying to figure out why that plane crashed last month, killing all 132 people on board in China. Both black boxes were found, and they are now here in the States. They are in Washington, D.C., and are being analyzed by experts at a government lab. The National Transportation Safety Board said it's helping these Chinese counterparts download information from the flight recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. They are hoping to find some information that might be able to shed some light on why that Boeing 737-800 went into a nosedive and then slammed into the mountains. It happened back on March 21st. And rough weather across a lot of the south yesterday. A huge tornado just east of Dallas left the path of destruction, and at least one person was dead. You are looking at what was left of a trailer park. This is in the town of White House, which is just a few miles southeast of Tyler. Winds got up to 100 miles an hour during a downburst, according to the National Weather Service. A 71-year-old man was killed when a tree fell on his mobile home. Other folks were trapped in their mobile homes. Great guy. He was a cowboy, and, you know, anytime he needed help, he'd help. He was the best neighbor you could ask for. But we'll miss him. They raised trailer up a couple of feet and blocked us in. We had to have the fire department come cut, cut things out so we can get out. 
Unbelievable. More severe weather expected across the east and southeast. It might even affect Tiger Woods practice round today at Augusta after he announced yesterday that he plans to play in the Masters. It was a surprise to some, not to others, but it has golf fans pretty excited to see him back at the Masters where he has won five times. Tiger has recovered enough from that devastating car accident that injured his leg to play a competitive round of golf. It has been over 400 days, and since that accident, he has chosen to return to golf at Augusta, one of the toughest places to walk, much less play. He said he will make his final definite decision after practicing nine holes today if he can get that in around that weather, but he's going to play. He did the same thing Monday. He played nine holes, played 27 last week. He said yesterday, it's already successful because he's there, but winning is on his mind. The fact that I was able to get myself here to this point is a, is a success. And now that I am playing, now everything is focused on how do I get myself into a position where I'm on that back nine on Sunday with a chance. Um, just like I did, you know, a few years ago. I love competing, and I I feel like if I can still compete at the highest level, I'm going to. And if I feel like I can still win, I'm going to play. But if I feel like I can't, then you won't see me out here. Uh, you, you guys know me know me better than that. Yeah, he was asked yesterday, "Do you think you can win the Masters?" He said, "I do." I do. I and mean, that was it. That was his answer. I do. Well, Boom. and Masters coverage was already probably going to do pretty well. And yeah. you said this morning it just oh. got an even bigger bump. I, it's, it's amazing the influence and the amount of people just get so excited when Tiger's involved and Tiger shows up. I can only imagine what the audience is going to be like. Can you imagine the crowds out there at the uh, Masters now? I mean, he said it was like a Sunday on a Monday practice, right? He played nine holes and he's, you know, chipping and putting and hitting extra shots and people are going crazy. And it was, it was Monday, a practice round. Right. But that's the influence and, that he has on, uh, on the game. Well, a lot of anticipation built in too, you know, coming out of the pandemic as yeah. well. That's true. So, well, he said the walk is gonna be really tough. Yeah, it's that is. Yeah. two holes and it's up and down and yeah. Yeah, all that over it, the place. That wouldn't he's be ready. interesting if that was the toughest part and he actually played a pretty good game. <laughs> right. Good luck to him. We'll Good luck, Tiger. Tomorrow. Thank yeah. you, David. Right. right now, 910, about 68 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are going to learn more about a story Courtney Friedman did a couple of weeks ago about three Texans that flew to Ukraine to help the people there in the middle of the war. And we're back at 913. <laughs> It's been an interesting week for Fiesta. Mm -hmm. uh, nice overall, but uh, yesterday got pretty hot, and today's going to be much different. And what were you just telling us during the commercial break, Justin? Well, we, <laughs> we were watching time lapse, and yeah. you see sort of this yellow cloud left uh -huh. up as the front comes through. Could it be oak pollen? Probably. Yep. Uh, kind of just makes you sneeze looking at it. It's, it's not fun to see, but it does look like some oak pollen got kicked up by this front. I'll show you here on the time lapse if you missed it off the top of the show. Uh, so we'll time lapse it to about 7 o'clock. That's when our front came through. And then we get the gusty winds kicking in. And watch the trees, the oak trees there in the distance. It's like a cloud of oak pollen right there. Man, uh, oof, if uh, oak pollen's not your thing, that's, that's not fun to watch. Now, thankfully, you can see it kind of clears out towards the end there. But it does look like the wind is doing a number on our pollen count. And there's probably a little bit of dust mixed in there, too, coming in on this front with these gusty winds. So there you go. Northerly winds right now at 18 miles per hour. Temperature is at 67. Dew point is at 43. What a change from yesterday, right? We got up to 95. Record high yesterday. Today will be about 15 degrees cooler. And the big story is going to be the wind gusts. Right now, gusting at 31 here in San Antonio, gusting at 41, Hondo gusting at 25 in Kerrville, and these numbers will go up here over the next couple of hours. We'll see some stronger gusts. Uh, so the forecast does call for gusts. I'd say in the range of 30 to 35, maybe a few gusts close to 40 through about lunchtime, and then as we get into the afternoon, the winds will try to calm some, although we're still getting gusts here 25 to 30 miles per hour, so it's still a windy day. Uh, now, wind advisory is in effect for the entire area uh, through 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, we showed this earlier, your trash can, something you want to consider today. The wind's strong enough to where your trash can may end up in your neighbor's yard. So secure it or, you know, stick some heavy trash bags in there if it is your trash day. Uh, those winds, as I said, will calm down tonight. And it will be a breezy day, somewhat breezy day tomorrow, but not as windy. So the satellite picture is, well, pretty cool to look at, too. Our front came through, and a lot of times with these fronts, out ahead of them, or at least sometimes here in Texas, you can get some of these ripple clouds. Look at that. That's pretty cool. That's right along that front, right along and behind it. And then we clear out 
very quickly. So those clouds had moved through with the front. Looked a little ominous, right? Uh, but there was no rain with it, uh, and everything is going to be very dry. Dew points will drop off behind this front. 65 right now in Holota, 61 Bernie State, 63 in Bull Verde. Dew points now falling off into the 40s, eventually dropping into the 30s this afternoon. So this air is very dry. You combine that with these gusty winds and there you get the fire threat. Red flag warnings in effect and this is going to go through this evening. Would not be surprised if this gets reissued for tomorrow as well. Winds again not as strong, but the air is drier tomorrow. So we still have that fire threat showing up. Here's the forecast for today. 72 noontime. We're up around 80 for a high clear skies. Gusty winds throughout the rest of today. And then tonight dropping down to 70, 67 by 9 p.m. If you're heading out to Niosa, 70 and 8 o'clock as we said comfortable and then by 10 p.m. when things are winding down 65 it'll be really comfortable great night to head out there uh, minus those winds so there's the cooler air i do need to mention out ahead of this storm system more severe weather expected today across the southeast not a good situation there they had a ton of tornadoes yesterday looks like they could get some more today atlanta greenville over to birmingham sort of under the gun. Our extended forecast, 79 Thursday, 81 Friday, 85 Saturday. Notice the morning lows, 43 Friday morning, 48 Saturday morning, and then rain chances come back into the forecast, thankfully, Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. We'll be right back. Welcome back 920. We've seen an outstanding amount of support for Ukraine from not only our area locally, but across the state and around the country. That's right. And Courtney Freeman joins us now to talk about a story she did a couple of weeks ago about three people who, after hearing about the war in Ukraine, jumped into action to help the people of Ukraine. Court, good to have you back. Thank two, two you. Two days in a row. Yes. First of all, why did these people from Austin go overseas to near the Ukrainian border. This is what sparked my attention, mm -hmm. actually, at this story. So we have some semi-local people from here in central South Texas who have no relation to Ukrainians. They're not Ukrainian, they're not Russian, they don't have friends or family over there. They just could not watch this happen. It was day five, it was only day five when they decided we can't do this. Um, the two from Austin actually have a friend in L.A., and he, as you'll see in the story, has done something similar before with other disasters, and they just got there and made it happen. And they right. got a lot of donations, too. A lot of donations. Yes. All right. Well, let's go watch that story. By the fifth day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, bags were packed and flights were booked. A.J. Forsyth and Summer Vaughn left Austin and Max Rance McDonald left Los Angeles with one-way tickets to Poland. We're at the border right now. You can see it in the background. There was hundreds of like mothers with their children walking across the border after having walked quite literally miles because all their cars died while they were waiting in line. And like, I, I like, I cried. The three drove down the entire Poland-Ukraine border and quickly realized the problem was logistics. So they combined their business, nonprofit, and social media backgrounds, set up this office in Warsaw, and got to work. We're now close with the, the leaders of all six checkpoints, and they text us and they say, hey, we need X, Y, and Z. And then we just jumped on social media and looked for donations. He credits the success with what he calls radical transparency through social media. If you donate your money to us now, you trust us, you see us using that money. These pictures and videos flood their social media pages daily, prompting thousands of donations that now total around $600,000. It caught the attention of a social media team from Yes Theory. They have around 10 million uh, followers. When they post out and they say, hey, we have a need for uh, bed sheets. Uh, and then someone from D Denmark who follows Yes Theory will be like, I, I can bring 100 bed sheets tomorrow. And Big life-saving shipments like this massive donation of generators. We got IV fluids, uh, syringes, uh, sterile gauze. But also small, impactful deliveries. This amazing woman who is leading the volunteer group, um, her first request was for these candy lollipops for the kids. We bought a whole bucket. <laughs> uh, as many as we could. We went to all these stores and, and the kids were just ecstatic. The refugees see their kids smiling for the first time in a while. The team has seen unmeasurable pain, heartbreak, and sorrow. But they've also seen so much kindness love and hope. This is the first time that like Republican and Democrats don't matter. Like uh, religious beliefs don't matter. G uh, locations that you live in don't matter. It, it's a reminder to all of us that we are one human entity. And that is worth fighting for. 
And it is awesome to see all those donations, but where do they go from here? So this group was obviously very scrappy, put together last minute, but they did have the skills to make this happen, to pull this off over $600,000 of donations now. So that's the question that I asked them two weeks ago. And the question, I guess the answer is still the same. Uh, they are just going to stay as long as they feel like they possibly can. They've left their lives behind um, in Texas and in LA, but they do feel so strongly now and they've made such connections around all of the EU. Um, that they they genuinely do want to be there helping. So um, it's kind of open-ended, but they're hoping things will slow down somewhat soon. Speaking of helping, how can our perhaps viewers get involved and help out too? Right, so if you haven't seen the story yet and you haven't been to the website, we do have um, their website on there. It's um, Ukraine, teamukrainelove.com. So go and just look at what they're doing, first of all, just because it's really great to be a Texan um, and to really be proud of what some of us are doing out there. Um, but yeah, all the donations, volunteering, whatever you need is, is on the website. And what about future plans as a nonprofit? So this obviously was not, you know, this isn't a, a full nonprofit at all. This is just grassroots people getting things together, raising the money, finding ways to get it to the people in need. But because they have such a system down, um, if you noticed in some of that, in, uh, in some of the interview with them, they actually had a wall of faces in the background. They put every volunteer up and then they string them. I mean, it kind of almost looks like, you know, an FBI wall or something. They've got all the plans for all the people every single day. Um, and they're actually forming a nonprofit right now where they're going to have an outline of the grassroots things that they're doing once they hit the ground in, in a disaster like this. Um, and then people can pick that up and run with it in other disasters, not just wars. The, uh, the man from L.A. that you see in the story, Max, he did this in Nepal, and that's why he had a little bit of expertise. Gotcha. Yeah. Sounds good. And the other thing we love about this, putting the power of social media to good use for a change. Yeah, to good use. We need yeah. to see that, definitely. We do. All right, Courtney Freeman, check out her story on ksat.com. Court, thanks. Yes, thank you. Thank you for Continue being here again. again. Love it. Always. Right now, 926 on your Wednesday morning. And still to come on GMSA at 9, we're going to introduce you to April's Educator of the Month and why she says she loves teaching first grade. Other top stories we are following today. Cleanup underway after a crash ended with a fire truck right into part of an apartment building. This all happened last night on the city's west side at Hillcrest and West Quill Drive. That's where crews say a driver in the silver sedan hit the fire truck, sending it into those nearby apartments. Now, while no one was hurt in the crash, the fire truck caused major damage to part of the building. It took out a set of stairs and destroyed, uh, uh, rather damaged several units. People in at least 17 units are displaced until repairs can be made. The one occupant uh, that was in the, the apartment with the most damage, uh, she and her husband and child had just gone to bed. So you can imagine if this would have been a couple of hours earlier or someone standing on the corner, it could have been multiple tragedies here tonight. We are told the driver of the sedan who caused the mess took off from the scene. And it's been more than a year since a 16 year old was murdered in Crime Stoppers. It's asking for your help to identify the suspects. Police say back on February 20th of last year, Isaiah Sullivan was inside an SUV like the one pictured on your screen when he was shot and then thrown out of the vehicle near the entrance to the Star Club apartments on Starcrest. Officers say they need the people who were inside the vehicle at the time at the time of the shooting to come forward. If you know any of those people or anything about this murder, call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. And we have an update to a story about a crash on I-10 near Crossroads yesterday morning involving a five-year-old girl. Balcones Heights Police have clarified that a man who is believed to be the girl's uncle and was detained after the crash has since been released and cleared from any involvement in the incident. People who witnessed the crash told police two men were seen pulling the little girl from the wreckage and then handing her to a stranger, telling them to take her to a hospital. The two men then ran off. The young girl's father was later arrested and is booked into the Bear County Jail. It's still unclear what caused the crash or why the men ran from the scene. Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. And Heather Samus has always been interested in education, and for the past four years, she's been teaching and sharing that love of education with her students. She's now a first grade teacher at Specht Elementary at Comel ISD, and she is KSET's Educator of the Month. And after working different roles in school systems, she says she really enjoys teaching first grade. 
Walk into class and I know my teacher gets me. Thinking half on and you know I'm learning quickly. Hey, 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 hey. Connecting with her students and making learning fun. That's what you'll find in Heather Samus' first grade classroom. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good day. They're amazing. I love this age. This is all I've ever taught um, as a actual teacher and first grade is my jam. You're on a roll today. They are the perfect age. Heather tells us this is her fourth year teaching, but she has been involved in education for about 20 years. Cross, cross, applesauce. Three, two, one. I have always been interested in education and then in graduate school I decided that this is really what I wanted to be and so I've had all different types of roles in um, school systems until I knew that we were retiring and I could be a certified teacher. Do your dance, do your dance. And it's not just inside the classroom where Heather Samus is making an impact, it's also outside of class. She brought the Girls on the Run program to Spect Elementary. I first like kind of learned about Girls on the Run when we lived in Virginia um, and Spec didn't have a Girls on the Run so I wanted to bring it here because I think it's a great opportunity. It's not just about running for Girls on the Run, it's really about teaching the girls a whole lot of different things and skills. On behalf of First Farm Credit Union KSAT, we'd like to present Thanks. you with an award. Heather Samus is being recognized as KSAT's Educator of the Month, recognizing her passion for teaching and caring for her students. That, you know, that means that my parents or whoever think very highly, and so that makes my heart grow. So it's very rewarding. And congratulations to Heather Samus again. Very, very well deserved. And if you want to, uh, you know, actually nominate somebody for Educator of the Month, this can be a, a teacher, a school staff person, a coach, uh, anyone you would like to, you can head over to our website. It's uh, ksat.com slash educator. And if you're thinking about submitting or nominating someone, please do it. Uh, we would love to see the nomination form. Let's go outside with live cam right now. The key factor going into this afternoon, other than bright sunshine, is the wind. We're again talking about fire danger. Underline that several times. Yeah, that's a really good point, Mark. And I think here within the next couple of hours, we're going to see those winds gust close to 40 miles per hour. So you combine that with the low humidity that's moving in and our drought conditions. Thankfully, some did get some yesterday, but not here in San Antonio. That means that there is going to be a high fire threat today. I want to show you the state of Texas. Cooler temperatures working in. 43 right now in Amarillo, 47 Lubbock. This is behind that cold front, 62 Waco, 59 Dallas. So the whole state's going to be, well, most of the state's going to be enjoying some of this cooler weather. It'll take some time for that front to make it all the way down to the valley. It's still 77 down there in Brownsville. And you look at the uh, satellite picture, you can very clearly point out that front uh, where the clouds are right south of San Antonio. And you see what looks kind of like ripples we get that sometimes when a cold front moves into stable air. They're, they're what we call gravity waves, and it looks like little waves coming through with the clouds. That has passed us by now. We're seeing clearing skies, and again, we're getting those gusty winds now. 31 mile per hour wind gust in San Antonio, gusting to 41 in Hondo, gusting to 28 in Kerrville. It is going to be a windy day. And for that reason, red flag warnings in effect for the entire area. That's that high fire danger we're speaking of, and that goes until 8 p.m. this evening. Your forecast. 72 noontime, we're close to 80 by 4 p.m., right around 80 for a high temperature. Gusty winds will relax some this evening. We drop down into the 60s as early as 9 o'clock into the 40s by tomorrow morning. Thank you, Justin. And yay! The Spurs have clinched their spot in the it. Western Conference. <laughs> After all this. All After that. all this. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to be like swinging from the rafters and yelling and screaming. We, we, uh, Mark Moore is playoff tie. Yeah, Look at it. We, we kind of did that this tie. morning. You know, we kind of did that earlier in the morning, but we're yeah. still excited. I actually thought she'd be kind of yelling it, too. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, hey. A big go, Spurs go. Yeah, that's well, right. Good. Come on, Steph. <laughs> Let's hear it. Well, now I'm on the spot. Steph has oh. been behind this team. <laughs> Shrinking <laughs> violets. Wow. She's been behind this team yeah. all season long. And yes. when they punch their ticket into the play-in tournament, yeah, Stephanie. I was, she's, you're saving your energy, right? Well, now actually, I mean, I guess about <laughs> three in the morning when I saw it, I was like, yes. Yeah, that's what I saw yeah. too. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about what happened. Oh, so I was going to have to get up at three to get the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the full stuff excitement. Yeah, next right. time, David. I understand you're a little tired. That's good. Hey, but last night they, uh, they beat the Denver Nuggets in Denver. A lot of significant yeah. things about the game. First and foremost, 
They win. The Lakers lose. All oh, too bad. So sad. And so, so that sad. means the Spurs are now solidified in the tenth spot in the West. So they're in the play-in tournament to get into the playoffs. That's right, David. Uh, actually, this win right here, one of the most impressive wins for the season. Uh, with no Dejounte Murray, we still don't know what's going on with him. He's uh, been listed with an upper respiratory illness, but he tweeted out the other day that he's lost like eight pounds. Yeah. So who knows what's going on All with that. Dejounte? But still, Trey Jones stepping up big time here. Josh Richardson. And a full team effort, six guys in double figures. And again, one of the most impressive wins of the season because Denver was playing their guys. Jokic did yeah, play, well, and yeah. so this is a good, great win for the Spurs. They're here. trying to move up in the Western Conference standings to get a better playoff position. But uh, mm -hmm. Keldon Johnson had 20, Devin Vassell had 20, so those two guys led the way for the Spurs. That's not good when you see that guy limping, but you know, <laughs> looks like he's going to be all right. And yeah. here's the key to last night's win. They not only played the Denver Nuggets, they not only beat Denver for the first time since like 2017 mm -hmm. in January mm -hmm. of 2017, but they have now won five in a row on the road. If yeah. they do not catch New Orleans, which they're a game back of the Pelicans mm -hmm. for that the ninth, ninth spot. spot. Yeah. If they don't catch New Orleans, then that means they will have to play in New Orleans. But winning five in a row on the road, so they've got a lot of confidence playing out on the road, right. and that's going to help in that one game series. So they actually have a better record right now on the road than at the AT&T Center. But I Which would still weird. like to see the Spurs catch New Orleans. They do hold the yeah. tiebreaker against the Pelicans too. So one game behind there with three games left in the regular season. So I'd, I'd definitely like to see this team get this home game here. It would be the 9-10 game and see the AT&T Center rocking for that one. That'd be a lot yeah. of fun. But before that, they got to play Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then, and Steph, I think Pop feels your excitement because last night he was not all that, you know, he didn't want to talk about the well, fact that they made maybe the Maybe he was yeah. tired. Yeah. It was like, it's, it, I think the part of the quote was, right. it's not like we're rule beaters. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wow. my goodness. So basically saying, taking it a day, yeah. day at a time, game at a time. And he yeah. was like, yeah, yeah, it's not like we're world beaters. So he's like, Steph, chill out. Okay. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I think he was talking to you. I think, I think that, yeah. was, that was Maybe. the right thing. He was like, I like, calmed down. We still got a f three games left in a regular season. Mm -hmm. What do they got? They got they got Minnesota tomorrow, and then yeah. they got Golden State yeah. at home on Saturday, and then they've got Dallas. Yep. And New Orleans has Portland, mm -hmm. Memphis, and Golden State. So this this could come down to the uh, very last game. It of could. The season yeah. for it that, could. Uh, 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 obviously, Portland not court. playing for anything. Memphis not playing for anything right now. Memphis is the two seed in the West. So my guess is New Orleans probably wins those games. But yeah. you're right. It could come down to the very end, depending on what <clears throat> these other teams play against the Spurs. And remind folks that aren't familiar with the playing system mm -hmm. again how this goes, other than the fact they'd be the nine or the ten. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like me. Okay, so I nine and ten. The winner, of, the winner of nine and ten plays the loser of seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And those, they go into the playoffs. So basically, the Spurs are going to have to win two games right. to get into the first round of the playoffs, no matter what happens. Yeah. Because the winner of seven and eight automatically gets get in. in. Yeah. They get the uh, they get the eighth spot. No, they the get seventh the sixth spot. spot. Seven. They eight. get the seventh spot. <laughs> <laughs> All we know is that the Lakers are out. That's good news. Yeah. Is it on here or are they just that, well, yeah, frustration? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, winner of winner of seven and eight. Yeah, gets I told the you it was a big mess. <laughs> the loser of that game plays the winner of nine and ten, and then that person gets the eight. Here's so what we know: so the Spurs are in, and they got to win the first game, yeah. whoever they play. There you yes. go. Yes. How about that? that. Let's yes. just go with that. We're just happy. They got three games left because they're not world beaters. All right, but let's enjoy the moment. Right. Definitely. Go Spurs go. Good <laughs> stuff. Yep. Good go win Spurs here. Go Spurs go. Ooh, tomorrow Fantastic. night, Minnesota. Go Spurs go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, it was nice to wake up to. RJ, yes, David, thank was. you guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 940, about 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Introducing your 2022 Fiesta Royalty, powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hello, I'm Elena Mikulski, Miss San Antonio. Viva Fiesta! Meet the current reigning Miss San Antonio, who's a senior at Liberty University. I'm studying psychology and I'm going to get my PhD in psychometrics. I started competing in the Miss America organization because I fell in love with Fiesta. Elena is honored to be part of the Miss America organization. I am surrounded by some of the most educated, strong young women in all of Texas. And as Miss San Antonio, she's using that platform for mental health awareness. I started my platform Talk Through the Taboo, which is breaking down the stigma surrounding mental illness. So I want to be an example for people saying that, you know, it's completely normal to have mental illness, to deal with mental health struggles. 
and that there are people out there and resources available to people. The Fiesta events Elena looks forward to most. I'm really excited to go to the parades and just see all of San Antonio, see all of the citizens and uh, see all the floats. I love them. The Taste in the North Side scheduled for tomorrow. Brighton Center hosting the event at the Dominion Country Club on the far northwest side. And despite some changes this year, R.J. Marcus tells us the center's mission remains the same, helping thousands of San Antonio children with learning disabilities and delays. Scary stories. Chris McGowan remembers the moment he learned his baby girl Charlie was going to have developmental delays. It was when she was born. We spent 56 days in the NICU um, and had to fight like crazy to get her out. Doctors told Chris his daughter had several health complications and would struggle to function normally. Who's this? That's right, it's Mickey Mouse. He researched how to help Charlie and found the Brighton Center in 2018. I can't even tell you, my world would not exist without this place. The Brighton Center serves 3,500 kids every year in the San Antonio area. They offer pediatric therapy, preschool, and also help parents navigate through the special education process. Katrina Campbell is the center CEO. She says their goal is to provide help at the right time. 90% of brain development happens before the age of five for children, and so we really focus our therapy and education models on that early, early age. It's, it's hard, and, uh, and, and you need to not feel alone. This place changes not only the children, but it changes the parents. Campbell says the center is there to guide children and parents. About 70% of the kids that we work with in our therapy program never need services again. It really is an honor to be able to serve families and just walk through this journey with them. That journey is in part supported by the taste of the North Side. All proceeds from the event go to the Brighton Center. You already have a hard time seeing your kids suffer, you know, through things that they do. But she, um, she's a daily inspiration. And Charlie is now four years old and continues to break through hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 947. And the weather should work out then and today as far as Fiesta going. Yes, we're, we are excited about this change in weather, right? A cold front in April is always a good thing. It came through without rain. Now that's unfortunate, but uh, we are going to see some cooler temperatures and some pretty nice weather going forward other than some gusty winds today. Let's take a look outside for you right now. We've still got some hazy skies. Still maybe a little bit of dust out there. We did pick up some of that pollen again a little bit earlier. If you were watching with the time lapse, it looks like the front picked up some of that. So hazy sky for now. 67, 74 at Stinson, 68 Kelly, 67 at Randolph. And the winds have really picked up now northerly at 18 miles per hour. And we're seeing some gusts now to 31. Gusting to 26 in Kerrville. Gusting to 41 in Hondo. Gusting to 24 in Pleasanton. And now the front has made it almost completely through our area. So you're going to see wind gusts pick up area wide and they'll probably come up a little bit. We think gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour possible through the noon hour. I think you'll see those winds calm just a little bit this afternoon. Not much. It's, it's still going to be windy. It's not until tonight that the winds probably calm into that 5 to 15 mile per hour range. We do have wind advisories in effect today. We can very clearly see the front. Those ripple clouds that uh, we talked about earlier right along and behind the front pushing south now and we're seeing uh, the clearing skies here around uh, San Antonio and, and most of the area. We're going to see full sun today. Temperature wise, uh, we're sitting in the upper 60s, Rio Medina, 61 Bernie Stage, 62 Comfort, 65 for our friends in Seguin, 70 in Gonzales still. And uh, temperatures will start to rebound a little bit now that this front is through and dew points. Oh, well, they're low and they're dropping. We'll see those dew points fall into the 30s. Maybe even low 30s, some 20s out west, and this is where it starts to get dangerous, right? We have the very dry air, drought conditions, gusty winds. This all combines to make for a high fire danger, and we're going to be right in that sort of threshold today. We've got to be very, very careful. Red flag warnings in effect. This goes until 8 p.m. tonight, and I suspect that we'll see red flag warnings in effect again tomorrow. Winds won't be as strong, but humidity levels will be lower. And so that still poses a pretty significant fire threat uh, for tomorrow. And then hopefully by, say, Friday, the winds lessen a little bit and we, we get some better conditions. Forecasts by noontime today, 72 degrees. And then we're only up around 80. That's 15 degrees cooler than yesterday. Our record highs yesterday, 95. It'll feel a lot better, especially with uh, the dry air in place. And then with the clear skies tonight, as long as winds let up a little bit, we should get those temperatures down into the 40s. 47 is what we're forecasting by Thursday morning. Boy, that'll be nice. Uh, so if you're heading out to Nyosa, 
This is pretty good weather other than the wind, of course, 80 degrees, 5 p.m., 70 by 8 p.m., and then clear and nice at 10 p.m., 65. That's sunset, by the way, at 755. Here's the setup. We've got that front that has come through. Cooler air is plunging south across the plains and then to the east. That cold air is going to meet some very warm and unstable air. And there is a severe weather risk across the southeast today. We point this out because there was a lot of severe weather there yesterday. They're going to get another round today. Places like Atlanta, Birmingham, over to Charleston could see uh, quite a bit of strong weather and there could be some tornadoes today. For us, it's just that fire danger and 79 tomorrow. Still beautiful, sunny. 81 Friday for Battle of Flowers. But I, I think when the, the parade gets underway, we're going to be in the 50s and 60s. I mean, it's going to be cool to start. Fiesta Flambeau looks pretty good too. 85 on Saturday. And then some rain chances start to come back into play Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. It does look more active next week. We'll keep our fingers crossed for some rain. Okay, we've got a medal giveaway tonight. Adam Kasky is going to be doing that uh, Fiesta medal giveaway. That is at Las Palapas, 3039 Southeast Military Drive, San, uh, obviously in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that. Uh, in his medal, by the way, they're in. I don't know if you saw his Instagram I, yesterday. I did. They are so cool. <clears throat> they're so cute. Cool. I mean, I, I that found is Adam, right? That, that is... It's totally Adam. The little head kind of bobbles back yeah, up. It's on a spring. I, I, I found one on my desk this morning. Thank you, Adam Kasky, yes. wherever you are. Yeah, go check right. it out tonight. Yeah, Las Palapas here in San Antonio. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 951, about 66 degrees. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, GMS 8 and I, one of our digital journalists, Rebecca Salinas, will join us to talk about our new outdoors newsletter that our web team is offering. She's going to explain what it's all about and how you can sign up for it. So that's going to be tomorrow on GMS 8 at 9. Temperatures are in the mid 60s right now. Gusty winds. It's going to be a cooler day. We'll only get to about 80 degrees, but gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour possible. High fire danger today and tomorrow, but some very nice mornings and some great afternoons ahead. Fantastic news. If you're new to San Antonio or visiting our fair city, there is a huge Toyota truck plant on San Antonio's south side. Been here quite a while now, does very, very well, and it's making headlines again this morning. Yeah, apparently the demand for SMA trucks is increasing. So this is despite the sluggish Toyota sales. So that's, that's good news here. It is. <laughs> this is from KSAT.com. Toyota sold nearly 11,000 Tundra pickups in the U.S. in March. That's a 57% increase over the same month just one year ago. And the year-to-date demand was also impressive as the automaker moved more than 22,000 of the full-size trucks manufactured in South San Antonio off of dealer lots, an 18.3% increase over the first quarter 2021 sales. Toyota officials indicated back in February that they uh, plan to diversify vehicle production here in San Antonio and that that is on the schedule despite relentless pandemic and supply chain disruptions. Keep on, keep on building those trucks, folks. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good news here. You guys have a great day. Viva Fiesta.